Let's go for question number seven. It is from Wave Optics, Young's double slit experiment. It says light source having 400 nanometer wavelength and 600 nanometer is used in Young's double slit experiment. The fringe width are beta 1 and beta 2 and number of fringes within distance y on one side of central maxima are m1 and m2. That means if the central maxima is given for a distance y on one side of central maxima the number of fringes for the first wavelength is m1 and the second is m2. Basis this fact let us answer this. First is the fringe width and you could see that fringe width is lambda d by d. So higher is lambda greater would be beta because these are same. So for option A that is correct because lambda 2 is higher. Likewise m is the number of fringe that falls within this distance. So m would be y upon beta the distance divided by the fringe width and higher is the fringe width less would be m. So quite obviously b would be correct and it says from central maxima third maxima of lambda 2 overlaps with fifth minima of lambda 1. It is quite simple because the position of a maxima or minima is given by this and for the maxima delta x is n lambda for minimum 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So you could see third maxima for lambda 2 this value would be 1800 and fifth minima of lambda 1 that would also be 1800. So this would be correct. An angular separation of fringes for lambda 1 is greater than that of lambda 2. It is incorrect because angular separation is the fringe width divided by the screen to source separation and this comes out to be lambda by d. So greater is lambda, greater would be the angular width. So the angular width of lambda 2 has to be greater, therefore this is incorrect. Let us see question number 8. It is from alternating current and a current supply has been given I naught cos omega t and a clockwise direction has been given initially. I naught has been given, omega has been given, switch is there at A and it is connected to B initially. The values are given and it says the switch is at B at t equals to 0. At 7 pi by 6 omega the switch is shifted to D and a total charge Q flows from battery to fully charge the capacitor and we have to see the maximum charge so and so. So the question is quite good. First of all according to this given situation let us see how much would be the charge quite obviously DQ is I naught cos omega T dt and t is 0 the charge is 0 and let us say t the charge is q and you get q equals to i naught by omega sin omega times t and let us try to see i naught is 1 ampere omega is 500 so I can write q as 1 by 500 I better write 2 sin omega t millicoulomb. So that would be the charge in the capacitor as a function of time. Now let us try to see the maximum charge on capacitor before 7 pi by 6 omega. Now you also have to see where is that time 7 pi by 6 omega and it is a simple geometry the 7 pi by 6 omega quite obviously would be there because this is pi by omega so 7 pi by 6 omega is here. That means when the switch was shifted from B to D the charge and the capacitor was this much. So quite obviously before 7 pi by 6 omega the charge must have been the peak value which is 2 millicoulomb but the option says the maximum charge is 1 millicoulomb so this is incorrect. Then let us see current in the left part before 7 pi by 6 omega is clockwise that would be wrong because 7 pi by 6 omega is there. So you could see 
the current direction has been changed. So quite obviously, if initially it was clockwise at 7 pi by 6 omega, it's anti-clockwise. Immediately after A is connected to D, the current in R is 10 ampere. Let's see, when A is connected to D at that instant, let me make the circuit diagram what happens when A is connected to D. This is 10 ohm, this is 50 volt. In that situation, you could see the charge T is 7 pi by 6 omega. This comes as minus half and Q would be minus 1 microcoulomb. And quite obviously, minus 1 microcoulomb is the charge. Capacitance is this much. So potential difference would be 50 volt. So, this is the situation at time 7 pi by 6 omega and at that instant quite obviously the current has to be 10 ampere. So, that is correct and you could see what is capital Q? Capital Q is the total charge flown from the battery to fully charge and quite obviously when the capacitor will be fully charged this would be plus this would be minus. And the total charge at that instant is 1 millicoulomb. Let me draw the situation when the capacitor is fully charged. Then you would see this would be 1 millicoulomb while right now it is 1 millicoulomb in this way. So quite obviously the total charge that will flow through the battery would be 2 millicoulomb and this comes out to be correct. So this was question number 8. Now let's move to question number 9.